Hello and welcome to Zip Tide. Today is one of those ultra expensive episodes and I've been away from this car for a long time. So let's get right into it. Pop-up headlights are the soul of the car they inhabit. I made it clear from the start I was saving them on this car and now I want them to actually pop up. To do this, I have more laser cut parts from Senkut Sen and I added a bunch of slotted holes so they're super adjustable. To pop them up, I have short gas struts and then to keep them down, I got universal door latches. If you can't tell, I am very excited the gas struts worked and I freaking love pop-up lights. Everything I'm using to mount up the headlights is half inch 049 chromoly. It's super stout, but also super lightweight. I'm super excited with this result. Eventually it'll get cables that'll actuate the door latch to open the lights and you have to put them down manually, but honestly, I'm perfectly okay with that. It is awesome and lightweight. Here's the reason this video took so long to come out. These are my MCS three-way adjustable coilovers and they're super trick. These were custom made for this car and they have tons of extra ride height adjustments. They also feature an external reservoir, which offers tons of its own benefits, but I'm not a shock guy necessarily, so you'd have to ask them. They're being paired with Terret Monoball top hats and iBox springs. I selected the spring rates by doing an online calculator that included the spring frequency. Then I guessed the length based on available space and shock travel. Another cool bit about these shocks is the ride height adjustment is independent of the spring, so you don't have to compromise travel for ride height. Also, just look how good these look. I mean, come on. I'm genuinely impressed with how easily these installed. But before you see how low this thing is now, it already needs a spring change up front. And now is where I introduce you to helper springs. I want my shock at ride height to be only halfway extended. The front is too light to compress the spring that far and the spring is just plain too long. So I bought a shorter spring and a helper. The helper keeps the main spring from rattling around when the shock extends while also being light enough to fully compress at ride height. TLDR, they let you run a shorter spring with a lower ride height without letting the spring clang around. Wow. 
So, now that I have this ultra expensive shock, in fact, the shocks on the Dodge were $60 for four, and these are 100 times that for four. So, that's cool. But anyway, let's get these awesome, awesome shocks that are no doubt better than Monroe Blues into the Porsche for the final time. what I'm talking about. That's so low. <laughs> I'm not just content with this car being low. I want it right. So I'm test fitting my set of fixie rims I unveiled now quite a few episodes ago. So I can order a set of spacers and lug studs to go with a set of mock-up tires. Eventually, I would love to run no spacers. However, getting new barrels for these rims isn't necessarily cheap and spacers are. There's not a lot of room between the shock and the rim. So I'm maximizing the poke for added clearance. With the spacers now measured up, I can now send these rims off to the tire shop to go get mounted. While I'm waiting on parts, I'm doing something I've been putting off for a long time. And that's strip the body of what's left of paint, bondo, and rust. To deal with the paint, I got aircraft paint stripper. This stuff is super hazardous, so make sure you wear gloves, a mask, and proper PPE. I brushed it on liberally and it works shockingly well. The paint can just be scraped or pressure washed off. Unfortunately, Stripper won't touch Bondo, so it's removed mechanically with a wire wheel. And boy, whoever had this car before me did crimes against humanity with Bondo. But thankfully, that's as far as I have to go with the car, so now it goes to the sandblaster and gets all the rust blasted out of the corners. Wheel spacers and studs have now arrived and I got some high quality Renline kits. The spacers are billet aluminum and the studs are grade eight. If you've ever worked on German cars, you will know the spite you have for lug bolts. And this is a worthwhile upgrade. The studs get torqued to 40 foot pounds with red Loctite. To round out the package, the wheels now have their mock-up tires, and boy are they meaty. The fronts are 275s and the rears are 315s. Compared to the tires that were on the Fuchs, which were big for a 914, they just look tiny. And compared to my hand, they're just comical. Eventually these rims will get Hoosiers, but I don't have Hoosier money after buying shocks, so they get the mock-up tires now, which were just 200 bucks on Facebook, so there you go. Sometimes you just gotta guess and test your way out of problems. And these five inch tall springs are my way out. The previous spring got the car perfectly to ride height, but it left no room for adjustment. But I'm happy to report these ones will be perfect.
This car sits beautifully, if not too low, so it will need some clearancing. Also, the lower control arm is at a horrible angle, so we'll have to do a roll center and bump steer correction, but honestly, don't look at that. Look at the pop-up lights. We like pop-up lights. That was not, I love everything that I've done to this car. So, headlights, big deal. No one does pop-up headlights. They need to keep them on your cars, your race cars especially. Uh, tires, wheels, great. Suspension, great. I love this all. Uh, next episode, I'm gonna work on the body. So it went off to the sandblaster and it's gonna get primed, but I then have to do all the rust repair. It's too humid here in North Carolina, so it needs to be repaired after it gets primed. That sucks, but it's part of the job and I got a bunch of other little fun projects. We're also gonna do some aero, so don't miss that. I'll see you next time.